All right, folks, welcome back. This is the ICT Mentorship Free YouTube Mentorship for 2022. Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a wonderful opportunity to study and learn this week and keeping up with the lessons. So we are looking at the E-mini S&P daily chart. This is June delivery contract month for 2022. And I'm gonna kind of like bring you back up to speed to what we were looking for over the last weeks or month or so. Remember back here, we had that bearish order block. I outlined that as an area to watch that. And we're entering a seasonal tendency, so we're gonna be expecting lower prices. We got lower prices. I showed you the relationship between the dollar because it's risk off. So we have all of the decline taking place in the equities markets. And I said that we would be likely to draw down into this relative equal low. So I'm going to kind of like do things in the trading view platform. So that way, some of you folks that are asking questions in the comment section, like how do I do this and where was this on the platform? Admittedly, um, most everything I know about trading view, my own students have taught me. So there's going to be a comment posted and pinned by me underneath this video it'll be trading view tips okay if you have a tip that you want to share with the viewers that are new to trading view please by all means just make a post and outline it as best you can i'm sure it'll be well received i might even learn something too all right so we're looking at how the market did in fact trade down into our relative equal lows. So this was the draw on liquidity, okay? Now, when I train my students and when new students come to me, the first thing they wanna know is how to pick the right order block because they know it's one of my concepts. They wanna know, you know, which is the entry candle? What's the entry point? Where do I get in at, okay? And that's the easiest thing out of all the learning, okay? Once you understand what the market's likely to do, where it's gonna to draw to, okay, where's it going? Why should it get there, okay? If you do majority of your studying and watching the tape, okay, reading the tape, which is kinda of like what I'm gonna outline and showcase in the live streams in May. Uh, just before I get any further in this conversation, the live streams will only be in May. I'm not trying to make a ongoing thing of this. I don't want to promise you, you know, an ongoing thing, but I am going to showcase some things in live sessions. That way you can see how to train yourself to look for these things. Okay. I will not be giving you trade recommendations. Okay. I will not be entering trades in front of you. I'm going to be outlining basically what you saw me do in this mentorship, outlining where this is going to go. And it went there. I'm going to be doing that with intraday charts, okay? And I'm going to point out certain areas to study, watch how price reacts right here, and look for this type of thing to occur here, because I want you to understand what it's doing. Why is it likely to do what I'm going to outline, okay? Um, the best thing that can happen is for me to get it wrong sometimes, okay? So that way, it'll disarm you. It'll feel like, okay, well, you know, if I don't get it right, ICT himself didn't get it right here or there, okay? So I'm going to do my best, obviously, to, to try to educate you and show you what I think is going to happen. But invariably, there's instances it's going to creep in. It's not going to be accurate, okay? I'm going to read it wrong, and it's fine. Do not, do not take what I'm saying in my commentaries and or my opinions over the chart that's going to be live. Don't take that as trade advice. Do not take a trade. And I'm going to say this every single time I do the live stream. Don't act on it because you don't know what I'm doing. You don't know what I'm viewing. You don't know what I'm trying to teach you. None of that. Okay. So you want to sit still and just observe and take notes. They will be recorded. They will be on the YouTube channel for those individuals that are not going to be able to be present. When will those live streams take place? There will be a New York session between, uh, I think I'll start around 8 o'clock in the morning. So that way we can 
get the chart set up. I'll give you my views overnight, what took place and what I think the economic counter may present. And kind of like build the mindset. I will not be talking in the chat room. Okay, the little chat thing on the side. You know, you guys will be saying whatever you want to say. I don't care. I'm not going to be looking at that because it'll be a distraction. The agenda that I have for that particular day, it would be very distracting for me to to read comments and questions. And because I know your question is important to all of you, no matter how simple it may be, I'll feel compelled to want to answer everything that flashes across the screen and it'll disrupt my concentration. So I won't be looking at the chat. Okay. I'm not ignoring everybody for the sake of being rude. I'm just ignoring everybody so I can stay on task. Okay. So there's that, but we'll begin around eight o'clock in the morning and we'll close it, you know, whenever I feel the need to do so, but I'll be willing to go up to 10 30, 11 o'clock. Okay. Which is a very long, long session. I know uh, they may not all go that way. I won't be doing it every day either. So it'll be a handpicked selected day in advance that you'll know about. And I'll post it on the community tab on my YouTube channel. Okay. All right. With all that stuff out of the way, let's get back into the nitty gritty here. So I outlined this area here in this low, and I said, this would be the draw on liquidity. So when you're on trading view over here, there's a little segment where you can have a choice of certain things. Now you can do this. So it looks like this is your, your bullseye where the market's going to draw to. You're aiming for that. In other words, or you can use the little magnet icon. I teach with that analogy, like up here, imagine an, an you know, a magnet of, of some kind down here and price is going to be drawn down to that level here. So this is where the liquidity was and they tapped into it today, right? You knew about it up here. You knew about the order block up here. You knew about the seasonal tendency I outlined and we have this really nice decline here. So I'm going to take you into the marketplace and strip this down a little bit and give you some more details. So we're going to the hourly chart. And this is why I do PowerPoint slides. <laughs> it's real easy to get to where I want it to be. All right, so we had a run here. Yesterday, it just kept pumping higher, 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 higher. Just fell short of this high. And then, so we had a, a decline and then the normal pause and they gapped it down, then rallied it back up. So between this candle's low and this candle's opening, right in here, that's an imbalance coupled with an actual gap. So I want you to take a look at that. Okay. Now we have this candle here, small little piece of that one here, this one, this one, this one, and this one. They go just above that area here. This is permissible price action. In other words, this is something you have to get used to. Okay. Look at the bodies of the candle. See how they're staying inside of that imbalance. It reaches for liquidity and stops on these wicks, but the bulk of the volume is being held inside of this imbalance. Notice that. So now we have the market release go to the downside. And then here is nine o'clock in the morning. I want to go into 830 actually. So let's go down to a 15 minute chart. So here's 930. That opening price here at 930. What's actually happening is the equities are opening up. The stock market starts trading. That's when you hear the bell ding, 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 you know, all of a sudden everybody's clapping their hands on TV, whatever. That's what's occurring here. It's opening. So it's running a short term high right here. And then 
breaks lower, creates an imbalance here. So on the 15 minute time frame, what do we see? Did it take a high out? Yes. Did it break below low? Yes. Was it a displacement? Yes, it was energetic. Did we trade back up into it here? Yes. So in here, you could be a seller and get in sync with the run to try to get positioned for, if you are a swing trader or short term trader, this could be your entry and an aim for that old relative equal low, which is that blue line here. Remember the two equal lows on the daily chart? I drew a line on, that's what this is here. Okay, and it ran down into it today. At 8.30, right there, we're using the opening price. Did price trade above it? Yes, it's in a premium. It's above an old high. That makes it a premium too. Uh, I saw, I believe it was a young lady and I, I apologize, I don't recall, and I didn't make a note of your name, so please don't be offended, but I know I saw it where it was saying something to the effect that you don't understand how it could be in a premium because it's above an old high. Um, anytime the market trades above an old high, that is a short-term premium because it's going into liquidity. Anytime the market trades below an old low, that's a discount, okay? Now, just like the purposes of what people use overbought, oversold indicators, things can be overbought and still go higher. Things can be oversold or in a discount and keep going lower, okay? See, that's why I'm suggesting that when people are studying price, they can't just assume that an indicator is overbought, so therefore, it's a good sell or a shorting opportunity. It's not always. But if you understand the narrative within market structure, market structure is not the answer. It helps you frame an idea, but the idea must be in alignment with the present narrative. Narrative is, is why should the market go where you think it's going to go on that particular day based on the climate, the economic calendar events, and the volatility that's being offered for that particular trading session or day. So these are all things that you're gonna to need to study and I teach on this YouTube channel. And I'll teach a little bit more when we're doing a live session because it'll be more practical then. So that way you're over my shoulder, you're looking at it just like I'm looking at it and I'll give you my internal dialogue and kind of like what I'm thinking that is the most salient at the moment. So that way your attention is on the right things at the right time. But power three, which is the open rally up or manipulation, creating the high, and then the movement lower, and then distribute their shorts below an area where there would be stops. So smart money would be selling short the buy stops here, riding this out, and then offloading their shorts to sell stops below those relative equal lows Remember, when we see these relative equal lows on the daily chart, traders are going to look at that as a breakout. There's lots of traders out there that have long-term trend following systems and models. And if it breaks below those areas, they want to be short. So that's going to flood the market with what? Market orders to sell at the market. Well, that's a perfect counterpart to smart money being short up here because they want to buy it at a lower price. And while up here, they're aiming down here. Is it hard to believe that when we were already outlining that last week and the week before? No. We have visibility. We have the ability to forecast certain things that should repeat. If the algorithm is in fact in control and we understand what the algorithm is doing, and I'm suggesting that my experience should indicate that we have that, does it deliver? Here it is. Okay, so you're taking the logic of certain principles and, and concepts and blending them with market structure. We're looking for lower prices and it should reach for a specific low, but also how does the present narrative allow for engagement with the daily range or power three? Everything I've taught you. So it's the open rally. Smart money enters near the high today above the opening. 
and they get out down here at an important low. And the market closes near the low of the day. Let's go into a five minute chart. One, two, relative equal highs. You see that? Now, if you're looking at the lower time frame charts, let me get this off here because it's no longer useful. If you're looking at that like that, here's the opening price. You know that there's what resting above that? Buy side. So buy stops or buy side liquidity is resting here. So it can run up and just to the left of that also, you see these highs here? They're real close to one another too. So for good measure, they might want to come up here and clean that out. This is a little too much. I think it's too rich for the expectation to get to that high. But in here is reasonable, but here at least, okay? Market punches up through. Yes, it does take those out. Then it breaks down, comes one more time back above the opening price, and then gives up the ghost and aggressively runs for the sell side below here. Now, for some of you, that would be enough. Getting short up here, buying it back below the lows, and being done and walking away. There's nothing wrong with that if that's your model. But we're going to take a closer look inside of this area here and see what we see. Alright, let's drop down into, I'm just going to go right to the one minute chart just to save time. All right, so we have in this area where the market ran above those relative equal highs. Here they are here. The market runs up, then it breaks down right here. See that right there? That's a swing low. Breaks below it. Was there displacement? Yes. Does it mark come back up into this little area here? Yes. Is it above the opening price? Yes. Is that enough? Sure it is. You can be short there. You have to weather this one more run up into your entry, and you may have a little bit of a drawdown, but your stop loss, if you're entering in this fair value gap, your stop has to be above the very minimum. The candle that creates the fair value gap, that's here. So your stop's got to be above that. For good measure, con you know, conservative, up here. Oh, but ICT, that's a lot. That's a big stop. Well, look how volatile it is. You want to be knocked out of the trade prematurely? Or are you just concerned about making the maximum amount of money on your trade? Dismissing the, the level of risk. That's what gamblers do. I'm not trying to teach gambling. So when you're practicing on, on your demo account, keep that in mind. That way you're not trying to overextend yourself. The sell side below these lows in here, after it hits the fair value gap here, and then one more time into it, below the opening price, it breaks lower and aggressively runs below here. So not a bad little run there. Let's go back up to a five minute chart. Okay, and we're gonna go look at the afternoon session. Here is 135, and I remember I stated at around 130, that's when I like to go back in. Now I've taken trades earlier than that, but I'd like to see 1.30. After 1.30, the lunch hour has been smoothed out and then there's usually some kind of a, a retracement higher when it's bearish or retracement lower when it's bullish. And you're seeing that here. The imbalance, relative equal highs. It runs up into that right there. That's an area you can get short on. Market delivers a run lower. Here's another little fair value gap in there. It runs up into that. That's a short aiming for what? That line here. That's that relative equal low on the daily chart. So today, huge, huge opportunity day. Lots of points that could have been uh, made available. But I did something this morning showing everyone kind of like what reading the tape examples will be like when I'm doing the live session. I did some executions just to prove 
visibility to prove I was expecting a certain run. And I believe I was on NASDAQ. Yeah, I was in the NASDAQ. So let's go over to NASDAQ. Okay, that's in here. So we're gonna zoom in here on this bit of business. Here is what I had in mind when I was looking at the chart. Woke up this morning. My wife is out of town with my daughter. So I woke up and just because, you know, creature habit, your spouse ain't next to you. So I had insomnia. So I sat up and I was looking at the charts and I said, well, you know what? I see. Well, let me ask you what you see before I do it. Okay, what gave me the backdrop for all this in here, which I'll explain in detail in a moment, but what gave me the realization that this is likely to turn here and go lower? Studied the entire fractal that's being shown, okay? Pause the video. <laughs> Some of you just refuse. I'm never gonna do it, ICC. Stop asking me to do it. All right, so we had this high here. We ran above it, and then we had the market shift. So buy stops taken, breakout artists taken in on the market long, and then relative equal lows broken. So we have a shift in market structure on a five-minute chart. In a time when it's bearish, we're looking for those relative equal lows to be tagged on the S&P, and this is not the S&P, I understand that. But the expectation is we want to see these two indices go down on the daily chart. So heaviness should be the, you know, the, the protocol going into our trading day. In here, we have what? Displacement below these lows. So there's a lot of energy there. So right above that, what do we have? Fair value gap. Oh, well, there's one right here too. Right. What did I teach you? This is where you do your entry. But ICT, you didn't enter here. Right. I wasn't looking at the chart yet. I'll get to that. He's in my mind. He can read my mind. This fair value gap here, we expect that to stab up into it. So our stop has to at least be in a position where it can weather that. So what does that mean? That means that you have to either have deep pockets and allow for your stop loss to be inside this here, or you use the micros, which is fine. Um, I don't want to do it on micro, man. I want to be in here twenty dollars per point. Okay, but you have to have an account that will allow for that. If you don't have that, then trade the micro. But I don't want to do that. Okay, gamble but not because I taught you to do that. So here is the order flow inside of that fair value gap here. Again, a little bit of extra runs above into that fair value gap there. And I'll put another rectangle here so you can get a visual representation of what I mean by that. I mean, you can clearly see it obviously, but I want you to just to see it by contrast. So this is the rules. This is why I've been teaching you, okay? If there is only one fair value gap, then you just put your entry there and you don't expect it to go up into any deeper retracement. But because it has another one here, expect it to stab up into that. Now, I know some of you in here want to be an ICT junior and you want to be in there on the highest candle when you're selling. You want to be on the lowest candle when you're buying. And I understand. But this isn't always going to happen. So if you're really only trying to aim for that, you're going to miss moves. And if it moves like it did today, that's, that's a heartbreaker because it moved a lot. And if you weren't positioned in it and you spent the rest of the day kicking yourself about being greedy about trying to get that instead of where I've already taught you, you'll probably miss the other moves that take place later in the afternoon and you get nothing for the day. All right, so anyway, so we had a shift in market structure. We move up into a fair value gap here. 
and we have a break lower, fair value gap here, relative equal lows. Now look real close, folks, okay? Relative equal lows, a high being taken here. We break down, these two candles move right below here. That's the same thing as these two candles here being broken with this move here. It's a fractal. This whole move here is the same thing here, just smaller. And it creates the same thing. The fair value gap here, the market trades up into it, the body's kind of you know, respecting that little area. Moves a little bit above it, that's fine. But then breaks aggressively lower. Does it take out the low yet? No. Retraces up in. Now I have two, okay, not one, I have two narratives in play. This one here, where we have a shift in market structure there. So this is a long-term high. Here, we have another break lower, it went in balance, so it's an intermediate term high. This is a bigger one than that one, right? So this is a long-term high, intermediate term high. By definition, they're both intermediate term highs because they have imbalances. But this one is lower than this one. And this over here is lower than that one. So this is a turning point making this by the hierarchy of swing points and market structure, this is a long-term high. Intermediate term, intermediate term because of the imbalance, but how they nest together for market structure, long-term, intermediate term. Now, when this is retracing up, this is gonna be a short-term high inside of a market structure that is really predisposed to go lower because we have long-term and intermediate term above me, this should respect the underlying order flow and go lower. And I'm looking for that lower price that's below here. There's sell stops resting below that. So as it retraces back up into this up close candle, what is this up close candle? It's a bearish order block. That's not what you've been teaching us, Michael, on this model. Right. I didn't say that's what this was. I'm telling you how to read the tape, okay? But I do teach order blocks on the channel. So we're going to go into this. Right here. So inside this shaded area, this is what I'm going to be executing in. Not with that color I am. Okay, that's good enough. May not be your choice, but it's mine now. All right, so we're going to drop into a one minute chart. Every time I do this, I always imagine somebody that has a little bit better understanding how to work with the TradingView platform. They probably have a whole lot easier, quicker way of getting to where I'm trying to get to. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so. We're inside of that blue shaded area on the five minute chart. I'm also inside of this green candle here. That's a bullish order block. So what I'm doing is now I'm gonna calibrate, which just meant, simply means I'm gonna go down and with a top down analysis approach, refine that order block that was on a five minute down to this one. So the market retrades back up into here into that order block and I'm, I'm trying to aim once it hits the midpoint of it I want to get in around that time okay so I'm entering there on that candle and then I'm holding in all this and it drops back down now some of you might look at this and say oh but this is that order block fair value gap here and what happens if it rallies well it does a little bit but what's it subordinate to all the things I outlined over here and on the five minute chart over here with a higher swing high. So the market structure is bearish. I'm not looking at this setup. And this is why I'm telling you, I tell this all the time, okay, is me teaching my order block theory, me teaching my fair value gap concept, is it going to become ineffective? No. Because number one, it takes a lot of discipline. You have to be absolutely organized. You have to know what you're doing. And that's why a lot of people just teach it from hindsight because they can't really, they can't really do it. 
So you can sound real smart, you can sound real educated and, and you know institutional, quote unquote. But if they can't do it, it's useless. So if I'm showing you these things, and I'm telling you also, look around, majority of the people that parrot what I teach, that means they're mimicking by saying what it is I already said, like an echo, but they're really not doing it. They're not doing it like I'm able to do with it. That should be your comfort. That people, by far and large, humans are lazy creatures. Okay, they're lazy. And they're not going to be predominantly rule-based, disciplined, responsible. They're going to be lazy. And they're not going to do what's supposed to be done. So it won't change anything. Okay? It won't make these things inferior. It won't change their superiority. It will not make them ineffective. They will remain constant. Now, the algorithm... I don't care how many people learn from this YouTube channel, okay? I don't care how many people rip me off and try to rebrand and change the name of everything I've taught. All of that saturation will not change because what I just said. The algorithm isn't going to change. There's new suckers coming in all the time. P.T. Barnum said it really, really accurately. There's a sucker born every second. So there, you're never going to run out of liquidity. Somebody's born, somebody gets old enough to start speculating and trading, boom, they're in the marketplace. And that liquidity will just add to the liquidity that will be on the other side of your trade. So there's no reason for you to be worrying about whether or not this is going to be in effect. I've been teaching this for a long time, okay, privately. And listen, if I honestly believed in my heart of hearts that this would fail and stop working if I taught it, I would not teach it. I wouldn't. I would have never even mentioned it. <laughs> and I'm being honest. So take heart. There's no reason for you to be upset about or worried or concerned. It will remain. As long as the markets are trading, these elements will be in these markets. There it is. All right. So the market rallies up. It stabs above the order block here, but it's just the wick. See that? The bulk of the volume and the bodies of the candles are inside that order block. Then the market does what? It breaks and shows displacement here. Remember what I said about this pattern here? Relative equal lows, it breaks down and it goes back to a fair value gap. Here it is again, relative equal lows, displacement, fair value gap. What does it do? Go right back up into what? The fair value gap. And, and, look closely the bottom of the bear shoulder block see that bam hits it you watch me looking at the chart it's there and then I'm entering on that candle I'm not entering it because I wasn't really looking at the screen at the second when I was I was holding the phone <laughs> this morning but I wasn't looking at it here because this is a one minute chart and I was doing something else and then when I looked at, back at the screen I seen it went up there and hit it and after it filled it then I put my market order to go in and sell two I sold three contracts here, I sold two contracts here, and then I entered again here after it did what? Retraded back up into this bearish order block here. So it moved down, came back up in, and I'm selling short here, there. Okay, what's the low on that candle? Right here. Look at this figure right there. So 13,334 and three quarters. And my entry, as it ran up into it on this candle, the entry was 13,335. So it was only a quarter of a point above into that candle. That was my entry. It had a little bit of heat here. So on that entry, it was one contract here. So notice what I'm doing. I'm entering at the largest portion of the setup or you know, the, the framework for the trade. I'm going in with my maximum position size. First, three contracts there. Then selling two here. And then I'm adding the last one here. At logical, precise areas. It's not randomness. It's not willy-nilly. It's just not flipping a coin. <laughs> it's not guessing. It, there's logic here. Okay. So 
when the market has this heat on it here, the highest value that candle goes to is 13,339 and a half. So four and a half handles. That's the heat I took on that there, but only on one contract, okay? Because I have two contracts that I'm short from back here. And I have three contracts short from over here. So I have all this built in equity with five contracts. So the one contract here that only has four and a half points of heat on it or drawdown, it's insignificant. I don't even worry about it. I'm not thinking about it. And that's why I, when I pyramid and I build in large positions, I'm starting with my biggest position first. And then I'm going smaller and smaller until I can't do any smaller. I don't ever do the final one contract and do one more and one more and one more. I don't do that. That's I don't need to do that. So once I had that position established, then I submitted to the idea of it going down to that level that I drew out on the, I forgot what time frame it was now, but we'll draw back out in a second. But here is the exit here. I bought all six back at 13,285 even. I wanted to be just above the level because it might do these little shallow runs and it might not give me my fill. It does a little bit of that in here and then finally digs a little bit deeper. I just thought I had to wait a little bit longer to get the fill, but it happened right there. And I posted on the community tab when it happened, boom, and showed you the little screenshot. There it is. Now, that's reading the tape. That is reading the market. That's getting familiar with order flow. And for those of you that are students of mine for a longer time than just recently, you recognize this as a market maker sell model. So I was selling in an area where distribution would take place. So all this stuff is there. It's logic. I'm going to say this point because I know there's people out there going through my trade statements and you're looking for precision. Uh, there's a lot of things that I'm doing in that state, in, in those statements that have nothing to do with trying to be precise. You guys wanted to see an account go up. I, I provided that. I also provided a way for my students that were asking me that I'm obligated to, to show them where if they went into a period of drawdown, how they fix it. And also I had lots of questions like, and I did it this morning with, let me see, where was the entry at? The second one where I did two contracts right there. Okay. When I did that one, it was after I did the, or was it the, let me go back and, well, it doesn't make a difference. The, the one where I had the fair value gap, I said, I didn't see it when it was forming and filling it in. After it filled it, it was still close to it. So it was a close proximity entry. A lot of the trades in that TD Ameritrade account, I'm using close proximity entries. And I'm also using things that you don't know about. Okay. I'm also proving to some of my students where if they got into a marketplace and they take a trade and they don't get stopped out, but they sit through drawdown, how the weather that. You are not privy to the conversations I'm having with these students. So don't assume that you're looking at those statements thinking, oh, well, this is this is all he's got. That's not all I got. I'm actually doing something else. I hear somebody out there talking, saying they can do things and I can't trade, and I'm baiting them. I want them to step out, but they won't. Okay? I want them to think that that's all I could do. And even then, they wouldn't budge because he knows I can do better than that. This is this is not even the best. There's other things you can do with my concepts right from this YouTube channel that's more precise than this. I know it sounds hard to believe, but it is what it is. I don't want those statements that I was sharing because like everything else of mine, people take my stuff, remove my name, rebrand it, and they say, you know, this is my stuff, this is my creation, this is whatever, and they sell and they scam. If I give statements that have real time and sales with live account and I'm producing like you see here, is it hard to imagine that someone taking that and showing it to people and saying that's their results and scamming them? Think about it, folks. Everything I do, there's a rhyme and reason for it. 
I'm not reacting to someone else's negative discord. So today, this is the last bit of business here, and we're done. So I did all this overnight going into a pre-New York session. And then we had all this back and forth. They pumped it up over the overnight high here. And then we go back into that discussion we had earlier. So they ran the high here with this run up. And at 9.30, that's when we expect that volatility to come in. And that's right here. Okay, so a little bit of whipsaw in here, boom, rallies. Uh, in my live trading account, I took a long in here and I got out at, uh, I think it was 13.409. I wanted 13.425, but I was a little apprehensive thinking that they may not stab through it. They were getting real close to it and it's hung around. And I got out just a little bit prematurely and that was it. And I didn't take anything until later on in the afternoon. I took a small little scalp in here, made about 700 40 bucks, I think it was. And uh, that was it. My attention diverted because I'm Mr. Mom right now. <laughs> my, my wife's not with me, and the two children I have that live with us still, uh, I'm you know, in charge of homeschooling them still and running this business. And I have two boxers that are highly demanding of my time. And I know some of you are saying, get to the point, get to the point. The point is, is I'm a real person. Okay, so I'm not able to be in every single move because I'm doing other things and I have a life. I know it seems like I probably don't, but I really do. And as introverted as it is and as simple as it is, I love my life and I like doing the things I like doing in my life. But the markets are not everything in my life. But hopefully you got something out of this and you can see how we did again. Uh, draw lower on NASDAQ and... I think that will be it for this one. Let me go back to even the SP. And you can see the relationship there. So both of them moving in concert, both of them moving in tandem. But look closer. Okay, this is why I went back to the even SP. Why'd you do that, ICT? Do you see? that look at the high here at uh, two o'clock in the morning two thirty in the morning today Friday April 29 2022 the rally here after 830 it creates the high but it's lower than the high at 230 overnight I'll go back to the Nasdaq see that 235 and we have a higher run on NASDAQ so this is what I teach is SMT okay it's showing it's showing a willingness to crack the correlation between like markets these are closely correlated assets the S&P 500 stocks composite and in NASDAQ 100 stocks composite they generally move together in tandem, not all the time. So if we're bearish and we're expecting lower prices and we see this, but the S&P doesn't do it, that's showing you that this is a stop run and it shows that S&P is really weak. So this gives you confirmation without using an indicator, okay, without having anything on the chart it shows you, uh, well, let me just do it here. When you have the NASDAQ up like this, you can do a compare and contrast by hitting this little tab here. And we're gonna add this, E-mini S&P, new pane. So it plots it below. And then if you're comparing highs, you wanna go over here, go to that little gear. Price source, you wanna change that to high. And you can see high to high high to high. Higher here, lower there. So it looks like it looks like a divergence. You see that? With an indicator. But it's not an indicator. It's price. 
So I use intermarket relationships and correlation and correlation used properly. There's a lot of people out there talking about correlation. They have no idea what you're talking about. But if you look at the idea of this relationship here, it gives you like an x-ray view of real accumulation and distribution. This is distribution because it doesn't see the same rally higher that the NASDAQ did. Okay. Um, there was two other things on my agenda here. I mentioned to one of the young ladies I would show the fib. This is nothing else, so you guys are all welcome to turn the video off because this is not going to be teaching really anything. It's for those individuals that just want to calibrate their Fibonacci and also some of the points that I add to the chart. And I'll show you what that means here. Price note. And someone asked me, how do I put those little annotations on? Um, just anchor to the high you want, drag it over. If you hold down the shift button, it'll make it level. You can also do that with your trend lines. So if you want to add here, if you start dragging it, if you put the shift button, it'll automatically toggle it and keep it straight. And so many of my students were so helpful because it used to drive me crazy. <laughs> so anyway, I, I know I told you, I warned you folks, it's, it's not going to be arm burners. It's simple stuff for people that are new. All right. Uh, the last bit of business is the Fibonacci. Okay. So I'm going to anchor your fib to two price points. Let me get this off here. All right. So once you have it on your chart, highlight it and then go over to the little gear and go to style and style. These are the settings. Okay. All you do is go in, click the little box here, type in the numbers you see, just like I have here. Now, if you want to see projections on how far down or up the moves will likely go, this is for equilibrium. So if you want to see discount the premium, that's what the 0.5 level is. It's 50%. And you can see by having this on here, it starts doing standard deviations. Okay. And if you want to calibrate it to the daily range, here, it'll give you a pretty good idea of where your low should form. Now, this was a little bit excited because it went below an important low, but that's enough for government work. If you want to show the optimal trade entry levels and you're pulling the fib up, I'm just taking this off so that way your attention is right on the levels that make our optimal trade trade entry rather. The 62 and the 79. Okay, and you can change these, make them a different color to stand out. I don't like to do that, but you can see it here. So if we were looking at it like this. Here's the optimal trade entry levels, and it trades up into it here. Let me zoom in. Can you zoom in, ICT? I ain't young like you are. <laughs> All right, so here's the high to the low. Optimal trade entry, it trades up into it here and into the fair value gap. Bam! That's what makes it optimal. So there's your entry here, and you can start going back in. We can do the projections here again. Go into it now. Move this out of the way. Do one standard deviation, two standard deviation, one and a half standard deviation. And I think that's enough for this one. So the range from the high and the low, you can get that for your. discount the premium but for optimal trade entry I like to use the bodies lowest open or close in the swings and you can see how nice that gets right up almost into the 79% tracing level you see that I'm gonna take this fair value gap line off you can see how, see how it cleans it up I see what the books say ICT don't know how to use a Fibonacci <laughs> you have any idea how many people have said that in the, over the years 
They actually make videos about me on YouTube saying that stuff. Look at this. I don't understand what he's doing. It's the bulk of the volume. I'm using the lowest opening on this candle here inside this swing. And inside this swing, I'm using the highest open or close. And that's what's being plotted on. Optimal trade entry is here. I look at this as stop running, just like this is. I want to get to the heart of the matter. Okay, I'm getting to the point. This is extra for the people that didn't want to stay. <laughs> so the optimal trade entry level here. Now, if we start looking at the projections down here, we have one standard deviation down here. Project that over here. Boom. See that? Hits it, and then we have a nice retracement up. So this is a good area to take profits here, and it's also below the low. So how far can it go below this low, ICT? Well, there's a standard deviation right there, and it does so handsomely. Then we have a nice little retracement. Then it gets wild right before the opening. Okay, But uh, that's the things I promised it would be at the end of this video that was supposed to be on Thursday, and I appreciate you guys being you know, patient, not going all crazy and pitchfork and you know, torches. You said you were going to do a video on Thursday. Real life kicked in, folks. All right, and I think that, my friends, is going to be it. And I will touch base with you, Lord willing, on Tuesday of next week. And so I'll talk to you then. Enjoy your weekend and be safe.